Hello folks, Phil Gallagher of Thraben U here for another legacy video. Today's video is supported by Discord user Hyperlink, who gave me two dealer's choice deck lists, specifying that one of them be extra spicy. Extra spicy resolves. Here we go. So I found this list in the 5.0 deck list dumps uh, from minus T110, and it is sort of a hybrid Cheerios and Affinity deck. The general game plan is to cast a Glimpse of Nature, and then play a bunch of zero-cost creatures. And once you've played a bunch of these, you are going to have affinity cards that are also going to be free. So in addition to the 16 zero-drop artifact creatures you have here, in theory, you have another, well, let's say another 11 creatures that should be free off this as well, and then thought monitors that cost one mana. And then there's some improvised creatures. Now, Improvise is different from Affinity, and the way Improvise works is your artifacts can help to cast the spell. Each artifact you tap after you're done activating your mana abilities pays for one of the mana abilities for this card. So Barricade Breaker and Foundry Assembler are also honorary Affinity cards. So the general game plan here is that you're going to go and cast all these things after playing a glimpse or get multiple glimpses going and literally go through your entire deck. And I'm not exaggerating when I say that. Um, spoilers, I'm re-recording this deck tech because I thought of kind of explaining some things a little bit differently after I, I played through the league. And then at the very end, you play Thassa's Oracle, which is the win condition of a lot of uh, degenerate combo decks. And we definitely fall into that category. And we draw some cards with Thassa's Oracle. Or, sorry, we, we do the thing with Thassa's Oracle, and, and then we just win the game immediately. Now, here's the cool thing about this deck, though. Like, let's say you glimpse and you can't combo off, like, fully. You can't just, like, play Thassa's Oracle and win the game. That's okay, because you end up putting just a bunch of, like, Frogmites and Salamanders and Mirror into play, and that's often enough to just kill your opponent. So while Glimpse should be thought of as a combo card, there's a lot of times where Glimpse is really just an accelerant, and you use Glimpse to dump a bunch of these things into play to make your, your affinity creatures cheap, and then you just like pass the turn on turn one, having made 10 power. And that is going to feel really similar to a Legacy or Vintage deck that's playing with Hollow One. If you floop two Hollow Ones into play on turn one, you probably win, right? Well, if you make two Salamanders on turn one, you probably win as well. Okay, now, while the deck is built around you having Glimpse, you don't necessarily just have to have Glimpse every time. You can just keep a reasonable hand that, like, has a bunch of these things, Thought Monitors, Thought Casts, and can just floop a couple of these artifacts into play, and that's often enough in a Game 1 scenario. For the post-sideboard games, Salvage Titan is super cool. So if you're expecting your opponent to play something like a Deafening Silence that is just going to keep you from comboing off, you just like play Salvage Titan, sacrifice three of your zero-cost artifacts, and then all of a sudden you have a 6-4 that they have to deal with. And a 6-4 notably does not die to Lightning Bolt, which is a huge, huge deal in Legacy right now. We also have Carpet of Flowers for when we get paired against the blue deck, Tormod's Crypt for the Unfair Graveyard decks, and Nettle Cyst as sort of a pivot card. Um, if you sideboard in Carpet of Flowers, that can help fuel the mana required to cast Nettle Cyst. So when you need to go on a more mid-rangey game plan against some blue deck, this is something that you can bring in together as a package. Um, notably though, the Nettle Cyst can be a little hard to cast. Uh, this deck plays 8 lands. So there are 16 mana sources, Mox Opal, Lotus Petal, and then the Artifact Lands. Uh, but if you just think you're naturally going to have three lands in your opening hand, uh, that's just not going to be true most of the time. Um, this deck was a ton of fun to play. I hope you enjoy. Um, no spoilers for how the leagues go, uh, but I had a blast. All right. Um, if you enjoy Legacy Modern and Vintage content, please consider subscribing to the channel. I'm dropping videos seven days a week. And if you are subscribed, please throw me a like. It's the easiest way to support my content for free. All right. Let's battle. Enjoy the league. Okay, I think I'm going to be throwing back my opening hand here. I, I just have no mana sources. Yeah. Yeah, we can we can go for turn one. That's fine. Um, I think I throw back a Lotus Petal here. I think I throw back a Lotus Petal here. 
It's close between Lotus Petal and the Companion, but the Companion represents another draw in a way that Memnite and Ornithopter just simply do not. Alright, just play a non-island. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's good for me. Yeah, Stitcher Supplier. Alright, Hogak. Let the battle begin. Oh, baby. There, there's a punish for throwing back the second Lotus Petal, though. I'm going to Lotus Petal and cast a Glimpse. And here we go. Memnite. Into Ornithopter. Into one little Sphery Boy. Into another little Sphery Boy. Ooh. One, two, three, four, five. Oh, is this it? So I play land, and then I control five. Uh, but this costs two. Uh, it looks like I'm stuck here for this turn. Unfortunate. Yeah, if I would have kept the second Lotus Petal, I could have glimpsed again. It's okay. So next turn, I can uh, do the artifact cycling to get another glimpse, and then we can try to combo off again the following turn. Or alternatively, one, two, three, four, five, I'll control six. So the first one of these costs one, and the second one is free. I could also just play two four fours and like try to play a fair game. That's actually reasonable too. All right, a blood ghast is fine. The hogak that follows is a little spooky though. All right, Thassa's Oracle. With the Hogak in play, I'm not sure that just dumping two four fours into play naturally is going to get there. Uh, I'm just going to be lazy and do this now. Like, I know I'm doing it 100% of the time. And I'll pass the turn. Alright, it looks like my opponent is sending some creatures in. So I get a, I get a little smaller when I block, but that's fine. Like, as, as long as this creature is still exists for um, affinity-based reasons. I'm totally good with everything that's going on here. Ooh, okay. Thoughtcast is strong. I control one, two, three, four, five, six artifacts. This will be my seventh artifact, so this is free. I mean, well, let's go. Glimpse. Cast you. Draw a card. Cast the Frogmite. We're going to save the blue mana for as long as possible because we do need the blue mana for Thought Monitors. Shit. We're not hitting super well today. I, I guess I'm going to just, like, pass the turn here. Like, I intend to win the game with this Thassa's Oracle. Um, so I don't think that I can just cast this for a card here. Uh, unfortunate. You usually don't, uh, well... Yeah, I wouldn't go so far as usually, but I think we have had far below average glimpse turns with this deck. The the ones that I had in the tournament practice room like fired through the whole deck um, quite easily. One, give me one of these eyes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I I still have just tons and tons and tons for affinity here. I think I'm just gonna gonna soak up a little bit of damage here. So I do put a, a negative one counter on this, so I don't soak up, soak up the full six. I only soak up five. All right. Do I wait one turn? I can probably just block Hogak, block four of that, take four. I, I think I wait one turn. I think I just need another card in hand to just have greater chances of actually going off. There's things that can go wrong involving, like, some Ventivines hitting play or something, and, like, I technically could get milled out as well. Oh gosh, grief is horrifying. Okay. So if I block this, I am taking one. Or sorry, if I block this, I am blocking four. So there's four, five, six, seven incoming damage. I can kill the grave crawlers safely, that's fine. And then Ornithopter can just block that. Wait, uh, wrong one. Four four jumps in front of that. Okay. Still alive. The bridge from below's trigger, and my opponent gets a zombie. That's okay, though. All right, we're going to try to go. And let's do it. Glimpse number three. Let's do the thing. Okay. Come on. Yes. Get me into, like, a thought cast. Yes. Oh, baby. We're doing it. Yes. 
Okay, and now most of these big ones are just going to be free. Oh, yeah. Um, I guess let's do this now, because if I find another glimpse, I want to play the other glimpse as soon as possible. Okay, no. Cast. Things are going well, though. Like, for sure. Um, now, I still have blue blue in hand, so it's okay to thought cast still. I just have to make sure that I have access to blue blue for Thassa's Oracle. Um, so this is glimpse number three. There is one more glimpse in the deck somewhere. Cast it. Cast it. And you know what I'm going to say? Cast it. Um, to just get some cards out of hand, I'm going to play out my artifact mana, because otherwise my hand is going to start going off screen. All right, new thought cast. Still good with that. Still have blue blue. Okay. So now I start getting... Okay, well, I still have the shield sphere, but then I have to start looking at uh, actually doing some of the improvising things in the not-too-distant future. Um, thought monitor is fine. But now I can't use another one of these lotus petals. Oh, until this happens. JK. Cast. Keep this one. Ornithopter. Um, thought cast is fine. All right. Yeah, we are we are gonna go all the way here, which is sick. Like this is what we came here to do. Okay, there is a new glimpse. Um, I am fine with casting that. I believe. So I have one, two, three. I'll have five devotion already. Maybe I don't have to cast it. Yeah. All right. Let's go like one, two, three, four, five. Oh, this is a seven drop. I have a five drop one. Let's do this one. One, two, three, four, five. Do this. Do this. Do this. Barricade, Barret Raker. Just uh, click on a bunch of things at random until my opponent dies. Okay, and now I will play a land and Thassa's Oracle. We have the correct amount of devotion required. One and two. Play Thassa's Oracle and Scry. Uh, no. And I win the game. We're gonna we're gonna have to take a screenshot of that one. Okay, um, as far as sideboarding goes, I will probably play Tormod's Crypts, and that's probably it. I'm not too worried about hate from my opponent. It's things like grief and, and thoughtseize that are going to take my glimpses and make my hands significantly weaker. Now I have to like think about what I want to get rid of. Um, Barricade Breaker costs a lot of mana. Let's junk that. And I like most of the rest of the stuff, I think. I don't think I want to sh shave on... Yeah, let's let's shave on the improvised things. I think they're just worse than the affinity things. Okay, my opening hand has a glimpse and a Tormod script, but no mana sources, so I don't think this one flies. Okay, so this one goes one, two, three, four artifacts into Thoughtcast for one mana into probably Mirror Enforcer. Uh, I'm going to keep this, and I guess you are just strictly better Mirror Enforcer. Uh, okay. What do you have for me, opponent? Um, a, a Thoughtseize is just so good here. That's not Thoughtseize. Still could be Cobalt Therapy. Oh, no, just, just lands. I guess there still could be Grief. Yeah. That's strong. So I'm going to lose my Thought Cast, and then my hand's not super functional. As expected. Okay. I do not believe that I am supposed to glimpse this turn. I think I want to just play out a couple of artifacts and go for it in a turn or two. I, ju I just don't feel like a single um, card is going to get there. I'm not sure if I want to artifact cycle the salamander. Like, I can turn my lotus petal into a green producing land. Um, I'm just not sure if that's good or not. Like, it, it's it's a mana upgrade, but 
it takes a creature out of my hand that can be very relevant when I start going off. So I think I'm not going to do it. I have two. I have two guaranteed draws because I can go glimpse Phyrexian Walker. That's one, and then I'll have one, two, three, four, five in play. So I can use my remaining two mana to cast the Salamander. I I think I'm just going to go here. Like there is value in waiting, but I. I think I just want to attempt this, even if I don't fully combo off, even if I just get into like some thought casts and uh, thought monitors and such and increase my artifact count, I think that's valuable. All right, buckle up, always yield. Okay, I mean, Seat of the Synod is not what we're looking for. The, the disaster level scenario here is when I just draw into two lands in a row. Oh. Force of Vigor. Well, that does make life harder. So I guess we're sacrificing this and nuking the few things that actually are in your graveyard. All right, let's 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 try to continue to go off. Oh, baby. All right. Well, not the best turn. But, like, we did, we did stop a Force of Vigor. And I still have five artifacts in play uh, in terms of affinity. I mean... Sure. I, I will make you reuse that mana. Okay. I don't think I want to attack here. I am not. I am not planning on winning on the angle of combat damage. I am planning on winning on the angle of like I'm going to draw my entire deck. And if I win via combat damage, it will be in a single turn. I, I just don't think I want to allow my opponent to Stitcher Supplier because like their last turn was quite bad. Now they're a little more threatening. Are you one mana? You are one mana. All right, nice. So I'm thinking about how I want to play the rest of this turn. I think I'm going to hold this. Just pass. Because if I draw a glimpse, I want to make it as scary as possible. Like, I want to win the game with it. And this also technically leaves me with the possibility of artifact cycling this turn, although I don't think I'm going to do that. All right, there is a Hogak. Um, so the possibility of death is real. All right, sacrificing for the milling. Um, it's when a bridge hits that it starts to get scary. That's not there yet, and this is my opponent's entire graveyard. Okay, they hit... A Vengevine, notably. And there's a Blood Ghast in there, too. Sure, sure, sure. Alright, there goes the Stitcher Supplier. I guess I need to pop this out now. Alright, multiple Vengevines in there. Alright, so Thought Monitor. If we can find a Glimpse, uh, we do not succeed. There is, uh, there is potentially a whole lot of hasty damage coming my way next turn. Am I attacking? I can hit in for four, five, six, seven. And then next turn, I'll be showing four, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen damage, and a bunch of my opponent's creatures can't block. That's probably fine. The Vengevines can block. If they get a bridge from below, those zombies can block. Yeah, I, I think this is like the, the abandoned ship moment. Because I like I think I die next turn. Like, I either die next turn or I need to kill my opponent the following turn. So, I'm going to jump ship here and dump everything into play, and I'll attack with everything that can attack. And that was seven. These don't have power. The rest of these are summoning sick. All right. Bash in for the seven. What do you got? All right. Gravecrawler comes back. So then the two of these are going to cast a Hogak. And Hogak is going to get sacrificed to mill. All right, Hogak returns Vengevines. So the big question becomes, where are the bridges? And they are not in the top handful of cards here. So now my opponent can sacrifice some grave crawlers and try to keep looking for bridges. Okay, now they're they're going for the Hogak immediately. Okay, it's back. All right, they sacrifice it again. Oh my god, still no bridges. All four bridges are in the bottom four cards of library here. That is uh that is exceptionally unlucky. 
all four bridges are in the bottom 10 cards of library. Or my opponent just boarded out some bridges or they have them stuck in hand. No, if they had them stuck in hand, they would have Cabal therapy themselves. Okay, they are targeting themselves. Okay, there is a bridge. I don't know why we didn't do this sooner. Like, there's Cabal Therapies way up here. All right, the Blood Ghast comes back. Sacrifice of Envine. Okay, there is the second bridge. And there's Hogak. Hogak mills me. Hogak comes back. Hogak does the thing. I think I'm just dead, right? The Hogak comes back one more time. That's eight, which leaves me with nine cards in the library. Yeah. So despite the fact that my opponent hit pretty badly, they still were able to win. Yeah, okay. I I see the writing on the wall. I will concede. Eh. GG's. I do not believe I will change how I sideboarded. Although, honestly, on the play, it's possible I don't even want to play the Tormod's Crypt, and I just want to get more creatures back in there. No, no, I'll, I'll keep them. But, like, every every card like Tormod's Crypt that I put in my deck that's not a creature makes it harder to actually combo off via Glimpse. But it, it looks like this is a combo game where either I'm going to combo off or my opponent's going to combo off. And in those cases, I want to have the interaction. Awkward. Awkward in every way. So this hand has double glimpse. But I don't have Metalcraft to turn on Mox Opal. And I can't actually really do anything. But I am so close to just doing everything. I really want to keep this hand. Like, it's not turbo, but it's resilient. And I will have... So many draws that just get me towards Thoughtcast, or so many draws that just work towards Glimpse. Uh, I think I'm going to mulligan, though. Okay. Um, I'm going to keep this and bend the Thoughtcast, I think. I think it's pretty likely that I just get to the point where I can cast both of these on turn one. It's not 100% or anything, but it's pretty likely. Here we go. Always yield. All right, lands are not what I'm looking for. Ornithopters, on the other hand, perfect. All right, Lotus Petal. So this is one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, which means this costs two, doesn't it? I'm one, one short of just going ham here. Um, that's okay, I can cast these next turn. I uh, just make two four fours. All in all, that's not a bad turn one. I needed to hit one more zero-cost artifact instead of this land. All right, fetch land. Do your thing. All right. We have named Thought Monitor. I think that is a great name. It's not correct, but I, the general strategic idea is correct. You want to name something that I couldn't have cast, which means it's one of the seven drops. Okay, um, we'll save the Shield Sphere for later. So now these cost one, and then this one will cost zero. Uh, we're just going to see if two four fours plus a Memnite kills our opponent. And if it doesn't, like we'll uh, we'll just try to rebuild and glimpse again. You know, do the whole thought cast, thought monitor thing. Oh wow! So did you keep just a force of vigor hand, and you're going to get both my uh, salamanders here? Because it just it just seems very weird to me that this would be a keep. Yeah, okay. Alright, Memnite can uh can just chill and do its thing. Seventeen more turns. Alright, a Dryad Arbor. Not as scary as Memnite. Play the Mirror Enforcer. And battle. Got that point of life. It's a little Memnite that could. Alright, Seder Wayfinder. Um there's a grave crawler in the graveyard that my opponent can't really use yet. All right, um, let's send them. Battle. Brings my opponent to 11. And I will cast this Tormod's Crypt, which can just chill. I'm not worried about the Cabal Therapy that's in there right now. I'm not worried about the Gravecrawler that's in there right now. All right, what's, what's your follow-up? Oh, it's just Hogak straight from hand. That's admittedly a little bit annoying. 
Yeah, okay. Sure. All right, now there is a weird game of chicken going on. I can no longer attack. And my like my opponent becomes the beatdown with Hogak, and I also just have to like respect their Altar of Dementia based combo as well. If I ever blow this Tormod's Crypt because things get scary, I can potentially die to the combo. I need to draw either a Glimpse or some sort of Thought Cast effect to get me deeper into my deck. Yep, I will take the 8. I will gladly trade two large artifact creatures for Hogak given the opportunity. Alright, they're going for it. Uh, I think my opponent is going to get a Hogak and then double trigger Vengevine. Yikes. I think I unfortunately have to. Oh, wait, the Vengevines don't trigger from that. That is the first one this turn. Okay. That's fine then. Well, I mean, it's not fine. But I think it's happening. Alright, that's casting a Bloodgast. So I probably have to nuke here. I really do not want to. But I think those Vengevines hitting play just puts me in a situation where I'm likely to die to combat damage. Okay, so they're going to convert Seder Wayfinder into a zombie on the way out. Alright, and Dryad Arbor as well, sure. That essentially just creates untapped creatures to allow them to try to combo off via Hogak. It's a tense situation. Okay, no bridge from below is great for me. Hogak will now come back, but it costs them almost all of their graveyard. They can try one more time here. Oh, but they can't then recast Hogak afterwards. Now this may be the end of their turn. How many bridges are in exile, by the way? Uh, unfortunately, just one. Okay, it looks like there's some sacrificing of creatures going on. Okay, so they're going to Legend Rule Hogak here, it looks like. My opponent doesn't actually have all that many cards left in their library. So they've got 22 cards left in their library. Um, with numbers like that, they might not actually be able to bring the Hogak back all that many times. They've They've slowed down a lot here, and I think they're trying to um, do some of that math to figure out like what they can get away with doing and what they can't. Okay. I think I'm just going to pass the turn. I think I'm pretty unlikely to die to combat damage. Um, like if I die, I'm going to probably die to the combo. Um, so ball, ball's in my opponent's court. I, I had 11, 11 draws there that were particularly strong. Yeah, Cabal, cabal Therapy is fine. Um, if I had a Glimpse of Nature, I pretty much 100% would have cast it. I don't like that name. Like, I'm, I'm sitting on three cards. It's pretty unlikely that I have something like that. Okay, my opponent is just passing. All right, here we go. Thought Monitor. And I think I'll just pass the turn. Still not planning on winning via combat damage. It's possible I'm supposed to, like, put a Frogmite into play since my opponent knows about it and, like, there's that Cabal Therapy, but whatever. I, I just want to keep as much gas as possible in my hand so that when I draw the Glimpse, I pretty much always win. Okay. I'm just going to take that damage. Fine. Although next turn, I guess, like, there is a desire to actually put some Frogmites into play so that I can trade with Hogak. Okay, Bloodgast, sure. So now I want to sack the Hogak that they have. Okay, they are just recasting Hogak. That's fine. But I see with it on the stack, they're sacrificing the first one. Okay. Uh, there is a bridge. They can sacrifice the Bloodgast and the Hogak to try to keep going. Okay. So that did not put a second bridge in there. Opponent has 10 cards remaining in library. I have 40. Okay, they cast a Hogak. They'll sack their Hogak. That mills themselves for 8. Uh, the other bridge, still not there. Okay, they are Cabal Therapying themselves. Alright, there is a bridge. Alright, so new Hogak. Sacrifice old Hogak. And mill me. 
32 cards remaining in deck. And they're going to repeat this loop. So Hogak comes in, sacrifice Hogak, I get milled another 8. I have 24 left. So this time they Hogak using all of the zombies. So I get milled for 8 more, leaving me at 16. And then, yikes. I get two two more Hogaks. Uh, that alone is 16, and my opponent had another, like, 16-ish to go beyond that. All right. Well, so much for that. Where's my Thassa's Oracle? I need it right about now. GG's. All right, round two. So, Mox Opal, Shield Sphere, don't have Metal Craft. Yeah, this one is not going to work. Uh, this one, though. Three of Tails... Lotus Petal, Glimpse, Glimpse, Ornithopter, Attempt. Fuck it, why not? Let's go. I didn't come here to not cast spells. Tree of Tails. Glimpse of Nature. Oh, buddy, here we go. Glimpse of Nature. All right, Ornithopter, don't do me dirty, though. Ornithopter did not do me dirty. Excellent. Oh, we are fucking going. This is grand. Field Sphere. Oh man, we have to play so many legacy staples here. This is sick. Alright, one, two, three, four, five, six. So I can go one, two, three, four, five with improvise. Play this one. Okay, and now all the affinity ones are actually going to just be free. Um I think another glimpse is totally fine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're we're doing okay. Uh, Ornithopter, Fear, and is getting a little, little big. I mean, that's a, that's a first world problem for sure. Okay, there is a new glimpse of nature. Um, I haven't hit very many of, like, the, uh, Moxen yet, so I think I'm okay to do one more of these. All right, and I'll, uh a frogmite into play. I don't think we've done one of those yet. Uh, let's do one of these. One of these. One of these. So let's create some extra mana here. Uh, just get this out of my hand. Keep this one. Play one of these. Alright, is it Thassa's Oracle time? Well, Thassa's Oracle and draw three. So no, not yet. I play one more. So I play Phyrexian Rocker, draw three. That puts me to six cards in the library. That, okay, like I actually have to think now. Uh, what if I Thought Monitor? So if I play Thought Monitor, I draw five cards. Puts me to four cards in library, and then I play Thassa's Oracle. Okay. Yes. All right, Thassa's Oracle. Or blue. Blue. Wait, did I miscount the number of glimpses that I had? One, two... Oh shit, I did. Oops. Oops. Thought I had three glimpses. Well. Oh well. I'm not even mad. <laughs> uh, no sideboarding. I don't know what my opponent is doing. Okay, um, second hand here. And play... Four artifacts on turn one, and then like make a three three. And ah, that's Mulligan. Um, this is okay. I just like try to reload via thought cast immediately. Okay, I'll keep. All right, land, Duder, 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 and then turn two thought cast reloads. I'm attacking for five on turn one, or sorry, on turn two. Right, underground Sea, Lotus Petal, sure. We're probably playing against Doomsday. One, two, three, four, five. I can Thought Cast, but I can't Thought Monitor yet. Now I can Thought Monitor. One, two, three, four, five. I'll take my draw two. Uh, glimpse. I don't think I need that this game. I'm just going to cast this. And Memnite and Frogmites can get in there. All right, that brings my opponent to 15. You, Hercules recall me like that's helpful for you, which is cute. 
So I probably just like draw my entire deck next turn now. Like get rid of two lands and the thought monitor. You have to like duress me as well. And take this. Okay. Here I go. Alright, always yield to that. And I will do the thing. Alright, Ornithopter gets me more cards, so does Frogmite, so does Frogmite's other cousin, so does 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. This costs 1, doesn't it? Oh, rats. I did not get to draw my entire deck. I need one more artifact in play. That's okay. Next turn I'll glimpse and uh, then try to draw my whole deck again. N, B, D. Okay, so this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So, Glimpse, Salamander, 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 ooh, Glimpse, Salamander, Sphere, Sphere's Cousin, Get a Mox Opal going on. Got a Memnite in there. Got a Frog. Okay. Um, thought Monitor, I guess. All right, draw two cards from that. It seems like this time, unless I math wrong again, uh, I'm pretty well set up to win. Get this out of my hand. Keep this one. A frog might. Uh, okay, there's the oracle. So each one of these is drawing two. Two fine. Two is going in multiples of two is totally fine here. All right. Yep. 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 Some artifact mana out of hand, I guess. The blue there. Do this. Keep this mox opal. Do this. I cast one more. Go down, all right, cast one more, go down to five. Then I cast Thassa's Oracle, go down to three. I do have three Devotion, but I guess I should cast two things first. So zero drop, zero drop, Thassa's Oracle draws six total cards. All right, because only two of these were this turn. Go down to five, down to three, and now... I can go ahead and Thassa's Oracle. But I should play out any extra artifact mana I have first. Better play around um, soft permission. So here's Thassa's Oracle. Okay. So we would have won the match now, but I'm going to have to do it one more time because, uh, you know, we, we gave our opponent a fighting chance. Um, I'm presuming that we're playing against, like, Doomsday. I, I guess it also could be Ant. Against Doomsday, I think it's okay to, like, bring in a Salvage Titan and just say, like, okay, I made a 6-4 on turn 1, deal with that. Yeah, I think I'm going to get these in here over the four Improvised cards. Okay, what does this hand do? So I will have one, two, three. I will have four Artifacts on turn 1, uh, which is not enough to do either one of these things. I'm going to mulligan this one. Uh, yeah, this sounds great. I keep this and I guess toss back a Lotus Petal. Now I'm going to toss back the Opal, um, which is a little weird to do, but it feels fine. All right, uh, the Duress is really strong here. All right. So I guess now the plan is just like vomit some creatures into play. I don't want to use a petal for this. I'll save myself one thing and just produce three power. Yeah, your brainstorm is fine. All right, sure, sure, sure. Cantrip away. All right, you've got a trap. Another cantrip. I mean, I I have delver amounts of power in play on turn one. All right, three. I would say my opponent is currently favored. All right, ponder, do your thing. More other ponder, shuffle the first. Oh no, the first one shuffled as well. Uh, this one does not shuffle. Okay, so it looks like we are playing against Storm. All right, ball ritual, sure. 
LED. More, okay. I am very likely dead here. Uh, Infernal Tutor, crack, crack. Uh, oh no, only cracking once. Okay, so they're just going to go for past in flames lines. That's fine. Uh, I think I'm dead. So Cabal Ritual goes up to 5 mana. And they can sack LED. Um, and then Infernal Tutor Tendrils does it. Okay, so like I, I punted this match away by like miscounting the number of glimpses I had cast in game one. And, and that's fine. Like that that is a you know match level losing mistake. GG's. Okay, my hand has a glimpse and a couple of zero drops. Uh I mean I'm gonna go for it on turn one. Come on, non island. <laughs> you can have a card. Here we go. Yeah, I can just do this now. Enjoy your card. All right. Always yield to this and let the games begin. All right. First Memnite. Second Memnite. Field Sphere. Another Glimpse. So let's go this stuff now. Pedal, pedal. Mox Opal. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I have plenty of artifacts. So that probably means that it is just safe to go ahead and glimpse here. And Thought Monitor for one mana. And this draws me two more cards. Oh, yeah. Salamander time. Uh, and this is just more cards than a Thought Cast, but I guess I'll Memnite first. Uh, now an Ornithopter. Um. More glimpse? Sure. This is glimpse number three. I will say that out loud. I will double check my graveyard once I get down to most of my things are gone. Your enforcer next. Um, I don't think I need to cast another glimpse, although I guess I could like actually stop and math it out, but we'll math it out once I get a little closer. All right, so 27. Each one of these is three. Let's do a frog mite. Get you in there, Mr. Memnite. And now I get a new opal. So this is the mana that's required to win me the game. So I have that going for me. I also at any point could probably just like stop. Make a blue. And legend rule this. It, I guess there is this like weird scenario where it could be in my last couple of cards. And uh, seeming like I might run into that. So in which case, I should start playing as large of creatures as I possibly can. In case I just have to actually win via combat. Alright, so there's a 7-5. Okay, there is the Thassa's Oracle. Now I can math. So I have three active glimpses. So if I cast Thassa's Oracle, I draw three. And then I do have three Devotion to Blue. So that will win me the game. All right, Thassa's Oracle resolves. Yield to that. No. And I win. Okay, neat. Um, so we are presumably playing against some sort of like dead guy ale type deck. Um, I don't know if I want to sideboard. Like Salvage Titans, okay. If my opponent plays like some Deafening Silence sorts of cards, I am really going to want to have some sideboard cards. But if they're just like playing Discard, I, I just like don't care. Thing is, like the Salvage Titans aren't really all that great because of the existence of Swords to Plowshares, which just cleanly answers them. I think I'm just going to whack the Submit button here. It's possible I'm supposed to board Nettlesyst for like the four improvised cards. I'm not going to do it. Um, this hand doesn't really do anything. Like, just gonna mulligan this. What about this one? One, two, three artifacts, have Metalcraft on turn one. I cannot thought cast. I'll mulligan this as well. Um, I don't have the green mana required for the glimpses, but I have multiple glimpses. I think on five, I keep this and just pitch this expensive stuff. And then once I draw green, I try to go off. All right, my opponent is mulliganing to four. That, like, very, very much makes me think they're mulliganing for 
like Deafening Silence or Mind Break Trap. What do you got? Oh, Seat? So they were an Affinity deck. It actually doesn't really matter if my zero drops get countered, oddly enough. Like, they still draw me cards. Like, that's, that's good and all, but... Yeah. Alright, Artifact Land... Hanger Backwalker. Okay, yeah, no, no big deal. Okay, that one, that one stings a little bit. So the good news here, in all likelihood, is that like when I am on the play, I, I just get to like do my thing. All right, pass the turn. Come on, Tree of Tales. You are my only hope. Or honestly, just like drawing a few artifact lands and then pooping some salamanders is probably pretty good. Like my. My opponent went pretty deep to uh to find this chalice. Alright, new land. And it's just a vault scourge. My opponent's not gonna attack to focus on drawing the hangerback walker. Alright. Hangerback walker throws. I discard the uncastable lotus petal. And I'll take four. I'm on a five turn clock, but more than likely a four turn clock. My opponent will find something else to do at some point. Rude. I'm gonna just junk a glimpse here. So this will be down to 12. Alright, what other fun things do you have for me? Alright, new Vault Scourge is not that scary. Like that, that does not change the clock. Alright. Guess I'll junk a Thought Monitor. And in come the troops yet again, and I'll go down to seven. Uh, opponent has two cards. I guess I'm supposed to believe that they just have um, a couple of uncastable zero drops or something. All right, so this is my last turn. I basically have to draw a tree of tails here uh, and then just go absolutely bananas. Nope, okay. Unseed. I, I largely just want to try to combo off on turn one. Um... But I probably need a backdoor plan. I think I'm going to junk the improvised creatures or salvage titans. Yeah, yeah, I think I'm going to do that. I don't think I need to do anything else. Like, I don't think the Carpet of Flowers is worthwhile. And I don't think I want to play Nettle Cysts. Like, I am looking to be the combo deck here. Hmm. Um, this has a glimpse, but can't really do anything. I'm going to mulligan this. All right. No. This 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 one's no good. Okay. Turn one. Uh, so this is a five, so I toss back this. So I'd go glimpse, walker, walker, and then any zero drop beyond that lets me salvage Titan. I think this is capable. Throw back thought monitor and salvage Titan. My opponent is currently on four cards. Alright, let's let's see if we can do the thing. Lotus Petal, Glimpse, no random force of will. All right, Walker redraws into Ornithopter, fantastic. Redraws into Shield Sphere, which is great. Um, Thoughtcast isn't the greatest. So I'm going to cast this by sacking three artifacts. So let's leave the land. Uh, maybe I should have played Tree of Tales then. Hmm. Yeah, I shouldn't have played Tree of Tales. All right, let's go one, two, three. Salvage Titan, Lotus Petal, Thought Cast. All right, Lotus Petal. I have I have made a six four on turn one against my opponent's multi four. We shall see if that is good enough. All right. <laughs> Holy shit! All right, so. Land, go to combat, attack with Salvage Titan. That brings my opponent to 14. And then I'll cast this by sacking three artifacts. One, two, actually I should float a mana here. Cast by sacking three artifacts. One, two, three. That's the second Salvage Titan. Not bad. So outside of some sort of Hercules Recall card... I think I'm I'm golden. Okay, yes, there is the concession. GG's.
Okay, um, I'm on the play. I have a turn one glimpse and four ish things that are gonna be free. Yeah, yeah, this is uh, this is okay. We can we can do this. Oh, okay. Here we go. Ye old glimpse o nature has resolved. Oh, buddy. Here comes Phyrexian Walker number one. Old school art. Phyrexian Walker number two. Um, so this is one, two, three. So this is my fourth. That allows me to play the Frogmite. Uh, Opal is six. One, two, three, four, five, six. So let's play this. It's going to cost us a colored mana. And now I get a couple bonus cards off that. Mirror Enforcer. Uh, yeah, we've also just probably, probably made enough power already where even if I, like, quote-unquote fizzle, I'm still just going to get there in terms of uh, just raw power that I've put into play. Hello, Mr. Frog. Field Sphere. Dump a little bit of artifact mana into play. Keep you. Um, I guess at this point a thought cast is probably fine. Um, new glimpse. New glimpse sounds great. Now I'm drawing two for each one of these. Uh, yeah, I'm guessing this is about at the point where things are deterministic. Assuming I don't fuck up again. But you know. It's happened. Alright, Salamander... Frogmite, more other Salamander, new Opal, keep this one, do one of these, more other one of those, more other one of these, do a Sphere, make a blue, put this into play, keep this one, put one of these into play. One, two, three, four, five. I do that. Uh, Lotus Petal. Now I should start thinking about number of cards remaining in my deck. So each one of these is two. Eh. Okay, so can I cast like a Thought Monitor? So that's four cards. It brings me down to seven cards. Sure. All right, so seven cards left now. I'll have four Devotion. So if I cast another Glimpse and then Thassa's Oracle, I'll draw three, putting me at four cards in Library, and then that's a win. Another Glimpse and Thassa's Oracle. One, two. All right, Trigger, always yield, no, win. Hot damn. Right? I thought it said, ha <laughs> crazy. All right, um, okay, turn one. Um, in the dark, not knowing what I'm doing, I think I'm just gonna, like, swap these cards, like I've done a couple of different times. Uh, I don't exactly know what my opponent's going to be playing. Okay, my opening hand here is such that I can make a turn one Salvage Titan, but I'm all in on a 6-4. I don't think I'm gonna do that. Okay, what does this hand do? This hand makes 6 power on turn one. No. What about this hand? No, this is another Salvage Titan hand. I probably have to keep this. So I go like Mox Opal, Lotus Petal, Mem Knight, and that can be a Salvage Titan. So I can like Salvage Titan and Frogmite and do, like do something like toss those back. Sure. Although honestly, it's possible I'm supposed to just keep the second Salvage Titan and make a second six four in another turn or two. Um, but but let's try this. Oh, City of Traders. Spirit Guide. Oh shit. Well. Opponent is is going for a sneak attack win here. So this is presumably a grizzle. Oh, oh shit. Just take 15. Uh yeah. So in case you're not familiar with this card, when it dies, it leaves three five fives behind. Yeah. Uh not not bad. Got got turn one. Uh, Salvage Titan will not save me. I'll go ahead and, uh, and concede there. But the good news is, like, my opponent is not going to have shit when I'm on the play. Like, if I can combo, I can just combo. 
Um, I, I do just like the Salvage Titan, just like poop that in play and put my opponent on a clock game plan, though. Um, I I think I'm going to keep keep boarded as is. All right, what do we got going on here? Um, three Opal, Ornithopter, Shield Sphere is four artifacts in play. This can produce a turn one, six one. Uh, I'm going to try to combo off on turn one if I can, though. Like, I can find a Salvage Titan hand pretty easily. All right, what does this one do? Opal, Ornithopter, Memnite, Frogmite, Thoughtcast. Five power on turn one with Thoughtcast back up. Five power on turn one is technically worse than the first hand in terms of the clock. I'm not sure that I'm actually supposed to mulligan this hand. I'm going to keep it. Because, like, if the thought cast goes well, um, this hand just has huge potential. All right. Ornithopter, Memnite, Opal, Froggy Frog. Oh no. Right. This one, this one cost me a mana. I can't actually thought cast on turn one. I should have mulliganed this hand. All right. A second Frogmite. Five power turn one. What do you got? Petal. Okay, cool. Podcast. All right. I'll just be. Uh, I'll just be attacking then. Five you. Okay. Let's go. Glimpse. Ornithopter. Always yield. That seat's not actually bad because that allows me to play Thought Monitor. Um, and Thought Monitor is Ancestral. And I hear that card is good. Alright, these extra glimpses are either great or horrible, depending on what these next few cards look like. Uh, horrible is the answer. So I'll ram out this Lotus Petal, and then back in for 5. My opponent is presumably one card of some kind away from killing me. Do I have lethal next turn? 2, 4, 6, 7. No, I don't have lethal next turn. All right, there's five mana. Sneak attack, sure. Activate. Yeah, you're you're not scary. It's when you come with a friend that it becomes scary. Although I think I lived through all that, right? Like, this is not lethal. All right, so I'm gonna have to annihilate six. So let's go like one, two. Three, four, um, maybe five, six, and then I'll just block the Emrakul with Ornithopter. I'll take seven. My opponent goes back to ten. So then they sacrifice those creatures. Another Emrakul will beat me, but another Grizzlebrand might not. Now, my opponent could have a Spirit Guide plus block one of these things, um, which could be a little wild. All right. Land. Opal. If Grizzlebrand attack, or sorry, if Emrakul attacks in, I am already dead to that. Um, so, like, I'm not going to hold this back to block an Emrakul, and I'm not dead to Grizzlebrand coming in. Okay, Grizzlebrand does indeed come in. Uh, not as an attacker. All right. And I lose my thing in combat. My opponent will draw seven, lose Grizzlebrand. And we'll see if they can hit another Emrakul. I die if they do. All right, pedal. And new land. This allows for double activation of sneak attack. That's an Emrakul. Get annihilated. GG's. Looks like they uh, probably had the Grizzlebrand too. Okay, uh, round five. How does this one start off? Uh, Seat, Lotus Petal, Memnite, Phyrexian Re Walker, Thought Cat. Yeah, this, despite the fact that this one doesn't have a glimpse, this is probably a keep. Like, I am going to get to draw a lot of cards with this hand. All right. One, two, three, four artifacts in play, which means Thought Casts now costs one. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah. So I will just go ahead and play this stuff out. One, two, three, four, five, six. Thought monitor. Take my draw two. 
One, two, three, four, five, six. Play Frogmite. Now I have seven artifacts for a Mirror Enforcer. Strong count nine, and I'll pass the turn. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine power in play on turn one. Eat your heart out, Delver. <laughs> okay, we have gotten the concession. <laughs> okay, um, in the dark, I think I'm going to continue to do what I've been doing, uh, which is not knowing what sort of hate my opponent is going to have. I'm going to board out these two cards for the Salvage Titans. Okay, what does this hand do? Box Opal, Lotus Petal, Walker Walker Sphere, five artifacts, Frogmite, six artifacts. I just make six power on turn one. How do I feel about that? Is that fine? That's probably fine. Like, not knowing what my opponent is playing. It's, it's hard to make decisions. But my opponent just, like, scooped to a bunch of power in play, which means that they're not a combo deck that can win on turn one. Okay, we're just playing against Delver. All right. Land. Petal. Opal. Zero six. One, two, three, four. Okay, this is now free. There's five artifacts in play. There's six artifacts in play. So this is Sojourner's Companion for one mana that plays around days, and I can hold an, uh, a Phyrexian Walker in hand. Okay, everything just resolved. Uh, here's to hoping we don't get melt down did Melted down? Magic grammar's hard, yo. Alright, Delver flips to Brainstorm. Said Brainstorm gets cast. Alright, fetch land from the opponent. Sure, sure, sure. I just have more power in play than them right now. Okay, yeah, can't, can't trip away. Let's race. Uh, Merktide Regent eventually will make racing scarier for me, though. Um, and I'm very aware of that. Uh, looks like Delver wants to trade. I will accept. Ash. Okay, there's the trade. I hit you for four. And I have a lot of gas in the tank. Well, okay, that's not quite true. If I draw a glimpse, I have a lot of gas in the tank. But, like, if my, oppo if my opponent can just, like, dig for a meltdown... Um, I'll lose a lot of board presence, and my top decks become just so, so much worse. I'm expecting two-ish meltdowns in my opponent's deck. Yes, that's, uh, that's the impact that Modern Horizons 2 has had on Legacy. Like, your Delver decks don't leave home without meltdown, because the Urza Saga decks are both everywhere and quite good. Yeah, I don't, I don't need that land. Alright, one, two, three, four, five... Thought monitor currently costs two. Um, let's take my damage now. Go a little salamander. Oh, it's at 11. One, two, three, four, five. I want to play one artifact. Um, I guess you. And then I can go ahead and thought monitor around a daze. Okay. Fire Blast is fine. It's, it's obviously very good, but like, I, I still have the bigger threat on board. My right, opponent is fetching down to 10. I have a three turn clock. That's an interesting island. Three mana. Bone Crusher Giant. Okay, that can that can trade with my Salamander. Am I attacking? Feels like no. Like I can attack and then floop a Memnite into play, but I feel pretty medium about that. I think I'm just gonna pass the turn. I'm gonna hold these to potentially combo off. I also want to, like, hold back a little bit, because, like, Meltdown is absolutely a thing. Alright, floating a mana. Okay, Sprite Dragon's good. Alright. I'll take that hit. Don't have an Ornithopter, so I don't have much choice about it. Alright, one, two, three, four, five, six. So, I'm going to play Memnite, and then I can play this around double days. Okay, it was Force. Force plus days, sure. I think I want to make this trade now. Yeah, and my opponent accepts. So, the Sprite Dragon is a faster clock than my Memnite. And the Sprite Dragon can hold back to wall my Memnite. But I have double the life total of my opponent. So we'll see where that ends up putting us in terms of a race. 
All right, a Delver. Um, that's spooky. Um, also spooky is Salvage Titan, uh, which is 100% likely to resolve here. Okay. I'll attack with this Memnite. Push one point of damage. And then let's sack one, two, three artifacts. And I will make a 6-4. Your move. Now it's possible my opponent can string some cantrips together and trade Sprite Dragon for Salvage Titan, though. Or my opponent can trade both creatures for Salvage Titan. So really weird and uncomfortable spot for them. Okay, they are they're gonna go for a jump block. So this puts me to 15. Okay, cool. Um, do I attack in with the Memnite? That's weird. I think I do. Because it either means that I guaranteed get 6 damage, or that I get 1 free point of damage. And the 1 free point of damage matters so, so much here, because it puts my opponent to 6, which is 1 Salvage Titan hit. Alright, the Sprite Dragon is holding back. So I guess I try to glimpse. Well, no. Because I can grow the Sprite Dragon and put me in some weird spots. Yeah, I think I'm going to go ahead and just attack with the Salvage Titan and make my opponent react to that appropriately. Um, this time I don't think I'm going to attack with the Memnite. Okay. Uh, Lightning Bolt targeting the Salvage Titan. That's fine. How do I get you back? Exile 3 from... Yeah, that's fine. And then my opponent's last card is a Force of Will that they can't do anything with. Yeah, minus, minus a Meltdown. I think we're just good here. A glimpse. Walker. Always yield to this. Oh yeah. Free frog might. Oh yeah, I am I am going to just poop power here. I don't think a meltdown is gonna get my opponent out of it. One, two, three, four, five, six. I think I'm gonna take this opportunity to thought cast. Because that should get me a, an artifact to make the mirror enforcer free. Okay, yeah. Oh, awkward. One, two, three, four, five, six. So now I will exile three artifacts from my graveyard and return this to my hand. One, two, three, four, five, six. So I'll cast this for one. All right, so I can keep going for a little while before... Okay, my, my opponent has just conceded here. All right. Um, so that was a 2-3 league, but I 100% just, like, unquestionably punted one of the games uh, in spectacular fashion. So honorary 3-2 honorary league. Overall thoughts on the deck list. Um, this was a pretty good glass cannon deck. Um, because when you don't go off, you can often just make a couple of 4-4s four or, like, randomly put one of these things into play and have a real chance at killing your opponent. So you have the turn one combo possibility, you have the turn one, I'm just going to make, you know, eight-ish power and see if that's good enough as a possibility. And when, when you fizzle, your fizzling often means that, like, you still have a great board presence. I'm not really sure how I feel about the sideboard. Like, I really like the Salvage Titans and I'm good with the Dormod script. Um, but I'm not sure how I feel about Nettlesyst. Like, it, it is just a big, big, but, like, this deck doesn't have that many mana sources, and, like, paying three mana for something is a little bit tricky sometimes. Um, I, I do not think this sideboard is bad by any stretch of the imagination. Maybe you're only supposed to board in Nettlesyst when you also board in Carpet of Flowers, and, like, that's a, that's a plan versus Delver, for example. Um, but I, I didn't actively think about boarding against Delver, because I didn't know I was playing against Delver in that last round. Um, until game two. Um, yeah, but this was really enjoyable. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, please click the like button. If you're not already subscribed, please consider subscribing for Legacy Monster Legacy Modern and Vintage content seven days a week. And if you want to try out this deck or do a donation deck list and get one of your things on the YouTube channel, that information is always in the video description. Have a great rest of the day.